here are five reasons that I switched from V-Ray Renderer to Corona Renderer. To start, I want to at least give you a comparison of the two renderer softwares. So these are all my renders. This is the most recent one I did in Corona. I use a HDRI in the background with a backplate. And uh, this is a buddy's car who had uh, passed away. So I did this in a memorabilia type thing for him and his family. So I made this one in Corona and the results are just phenomenal. I cannot be happier with the way this came out and uh, Corona software. And this is another one I did using Corona as well. And this was uh, another one. So these are all done using Corona and uh, the, the new software that I've been using instead of V-Ray. So yes, I've gotten better at rendering in time, but if I go back and look at my V-Ray render, I just, I don't feel as happy. Um, I was using a HDRI here as well. And uh, same with this one, but just the, I feel like the quality here is just so starkly different, at least for car renderers, that I could never go back to using V-Ray ever again. But you can see here with um, Kazel, the way his style of render is, and what I was doing, uh, it's kind of like I was taking inspiration off that, and you can see just how clean everything is. So jumping into 3ds Max, my first reason here is the post-production. This is something I never really use that much in, um, in V-Ray, but I use it all the time in Corona. So I'm gonna start uh, interactive render here and we get this popping up and right away it's really fast. So I get this uh, nice beauty shot of my render. And this is the same one that I showed you before on my portfolio. There's no editing done in Photoshop, nothing done in Lightroom. This all comes straight out of 3ds Max. And the reason for that is the settings here that you can use when you finish uh, rendering your product. So this tone mapping here has been a lifesaver. So if I turn this off, you can see just how flat and boring this render is. But once I turn this on and I adjust these settings, I get this really nice, beautiful render. And uh, this was one of the huge things that made me want to switch over to Corona was the fact that I can do all this editing right here in 3ds max versus having to bring it over into lightroom there is still benefits to that but i like being able to do it right in my software and be able to export right to it uh, you also have a few things that v-ray does not have in theirs so v-ray has this as well um but they don't have blooming glare so if you look right here at the headlights i can turn this off and you get this blooming glare from lights so I got these lights inside the headlights and this gets a nice little reflection coming off of them. And you can adjust this, you can make this super intense if you want. Oops, let me, let's put that like five. I uh, will put this at like 15. You can see it really bumps it up. But this has been nice for doing my car renderers because, well, it's a car and there's gonna be a little bit of glare. Another thing is the uh, LUT. I've never used it, but basically what this is, is like a Instagram style filter. It's a filter that goes on top of your image. And with V-Ray, you have to go online and download those where in Corona, you can just click on it and add your own. Uh, the last time I tried doing this, it broke my uh, software. So I haven't touched it yet and I don't wanna mess up the video by clicking on it, but you can click on this and add these filters on top of your render. Uh, a few more things is there's this denoise here that I use. So when I render it, I can then denoise it, which is great because if you are in a hurry, you can render something that's a little bit more noisy and then you can just throw in the denoise afterwards. And then lastly in the settings is you have the sharpening and blurring. You can really, uh, if I zoom in here, you can see this is like, this is only like a 600 pixel render. But if I click on sharpen, it'll make it look nicer. So that is reason number one. Reason number two, uh, something that I really love about Corona, and especially with this render, I did this render specifically like this, just to showcase it, is Corona here has its own material library. So if I click on this material library and I bring it over, you get a bunch of 
built-in materials. So these are just right in here. All I gotta do is just click and drag it on here. So this entire vehicle and this entire scene was done using just these materials that are built in. And if you have, if you do want to edit one of these, like let's say I want to take this, because this is what I did. I took some of these and I brought them in and, you know, tweaked them a little bit. Let's say instead of orange, you know, I want to change that. You know, you click on it, it doesn't allow you to change it. You can then drag that into your material editor and you can edit that material yourself. And that's really nice if you're new to doing materials because you can kind of see how these materials are built and edit it based off that. So I think this is really user-friendly for someone that's uh, new to the software. So if I wanted to, I can just drag that right onto the hood. Oops, it didn't work. We'll just do assign to selected object. And now it's not working, of course. <laughs> oh, cause I'm not rendering, that's why. That's my own fault. I uh, don't nope, not render, let's stop. I wanna do interactive. Here we go. I don't need that big of a interactive screen. But yeah, you can see here, I can just apply those right on there and it's just built right in. You don't gotta download anything special. You don't gotta go to another website and download materials. It's all right here in the software and I think that is just fantastic. So I'm really happy that I have these built-in materials that I can use in the software. So reason number three is the interactive uh, feature. So V-Ray, they have their RT mode, which allows you to switch your render over to RT, and then you can you know, see what you're doing as you're building it. Uh, Corona, they just have this start interactive, and it'll just do it as you go. It's really nice. And you can see it's very quick. So within just like a few seconds, I get these really nice um, renders and it gives me an idea of what I'm doing with my project. And it's all real time and it's super fast. Just this alone is probably the biggest reason I could tell you to switch to Corona is just how fast this interactive render is. It's it saved me so much time instead of having to, you know, do something, hit render, see what needs to be fixed, come back and refix it. I can now just have this going on my other screen as I'm working and I can see exactly what is happening in real time. Then on top of it, I can do these tone mapping while I'm also doing this. It's just a really nice workflow and it allows me to do things a lot faster and more efficiently. Now V-Rays does work, don't get me wrong, a lot of people do like it. Um, I personally do not like the one with V-Ray simply because it's just very slow with my computer. And I have a 2070 Super, I have a 3700X uh, Risen processor. So I have a good computer, but for some reason the V-Ray one just does not work very well. So I've been much happier using this interactive software. So reason number four, if you come over here and we go into our settings, uh, you know I've done videos on V-Ray settings and how to set up your scene so that way you can have the best looking render. Well, in Corona, you don't really have to do that. The only thing you have is this performance tab. That's it. That's all the settings you have to mess with to make your scene look better. And I haven't even touched these. these this is just how it came, and this is how good my render looks. So there's no adjusting all these weird little settings that Vera has. You just turn the program on and go, which makes this software really user-friendly and very friendly to beginners. So if you're new to rendering and you wanna create high quality renders, you have that material library and you have no settings to mess with. So the only thing you have to do is play with the camera. And I have a video on how to mess with the cameras and the camera in Corona is actually almost identical to the one in um, V-Ray. So if you watch that video, it'll be pretty similar, honestly. It's all about ISO exposure and things like that that you would find in a normal camera. But that's another video. So that's it for the settings. That's that's all there is. It's straightforward. I mean, you have your width and height and things like that. And you have some of these uh, scene ones here, which allows you to um, do a few things I'll point out. 
So one is like the denoising. I'll always throw this denoise on. So after the render's done, it'll throw a denoise on and it'll get rid of, like if we zoom in here, and there's some of this, these little weird imperfections, it will get rid of those and make it look smoother. And, uh, and if you don't like it, and I say you render it and you don't like it, you can just turn denoise off. It's that simple. You also have your material override and some of the other basic things, but none of this affects the actual outcome of the render. And last on, uh, my, on my list of things, number five, is the price. Once again, like a lot of people are getting into 3D, it's becoming very popular. I know a lot of people use Blender, but 3ds Max is kind of like the standard of the industry. Uh, the price difference is absolutely massive. V-Ray is about $80 a month, which is very expensive. And if you want to do a one-time fee for V-Ray, it's $1,180 US dollars. That's a, quite a chunk to spend on a render software. Now for Corona Renderer, it's actually only $28.50 a month US, which really isn't bad. They do have a free trial as well. And if you want to purchase Corona, uh, the renderer, I, I gotta be careful here because <laughs> what's going on in the world, um, the, the renderer is only $505. Like $500 to purchase a renderer that will get you results like this. I mean, these results are absolutely mind blowing. Uh, granted, I've only done cards with it so far. I'm sure doing interior renders and other realistic things, it'll look just as nice. But $500, one time you own it, is phenomenal. I, I couldn't be happier with the cost to have a program that creates results like this. I mean, the results are just phenomenal, and I'm so happy. And if you've been thinking about switching, let me tell you, it's really worth switching. And uh, we'll do a render here really fast. And uh, we'll see just how quick it actually is. So the way uh, this renderer works, where it is, there's a little part that says, ah, there we go. It does uh, this, it gives you the render pass, you know. I'd say for me to do this render, which is 1920 by 1080, it'll take me maybe, I don't know, four minutes until it gets to where I like it. So let's go ahead and wait for this to get like maybe one more and we'll stop it so that way you can see the denoise. And we'll stop right there. Now you can see it's adding this denoise to it. And uh, once that's done, I'll turn it on and off and you can kind of see what it does. But I, I really advise you to switch if you're thinking about it. It's been great for me. I've been enjoying it. Yeah, right there. So if I turn this off, on, it's, this is just like a lifesaver. The fact that I can get rid of a ton of noise just by clicking that button is huge. So, I mean, this isn't the best render ever, but for, I don't know, what was that, 30 seconds? 30 seconds to make something like this, that's pretty good. And uh, I honestly couldn't be happier. It's the whole reason I'm making this video. And lastly, just like a bonus one. So let's say you have a V-Ray scene and you're like, man, like I, I've been working on V-Ray and I really don't want to switch everything over. There is actually a converter button. So you can come down to Corona Converter and you can click on this and this will convert your entire V-Ray scene. It'll do the lighting, materials, everything and turn it into a Corona scene. It's... So awesome, because that was my, my first gripe, was like, man, like I do everything in V-Ray, I don't want to take the time to convert everything over. Well, you can convert it over with one click of a button. It's awesome. Uh, anyways, so I'm probably gonna be doing more videos on this render software and show you how to create some of the awesome things that I'm creating, since the quality of my work has come immensely a long ways and I mean, this was what 2019. Yeah, this was this was one year ago. In one year, I went from this to this. It's crazy. So I want to make more videos to show you guys how to make some awesome renders like that. I uh, hope you guys like this. If you did, hit the like button. It tells YouTube that you like this video and that more people should watch it, and it'll show you more content like this because you liked it. Uh, subscribe if you haven't you know, do all those things, leave a comment, what type of video you want to see, 
If you have any questions, uh, leave a comment. I'm usually pretty good about answering questions. If I don't, it's something I have no idea about and it's just me being lazy probably. <laughs> Anyways, hope you guys liked the video and I uh, look forward to talking to you guys in the comments and seeing you in the next video. Goodbye.